Hello, I'm Eskimo, and I'm here to talk about CorelDRAW. This video is about my Rect Area Dims macro. Rect Area Dims is a macro that can look at selected objects, figure out the width and height of the rectangular area associated with those objects, and then create text labels showing the dimensions. So as an example, if I select these three stars, click Create, it has created text labels showing the width and height of each of those stars. Now, when it did that, it had settings here for what the units are. In this case, it's picking up the ruler units from the uh, horizontal ruler. You could also specify some other units here if you wanted to use ex explicit units instead of whichever ones the document is currently using. You can also set the number of decimal places, trailing zeros, uh, choose whether you show units or not in the label, uh, text properties, font, and font size. And here we have things for setting the position relative to the rectangular area. In this case, I had it using the centered position horizontally, and I had an offset of zero from that. You could also have set it to the inside or outside on the left or the right. Uh, similarly, uh, vertical position, you also have the uh, analogous options. In this case, I'm using bottom outside, but I'm also adding a vertical offset of uh, negative 0.3 inches to push it down a little bit below the shape. If I selected these again, but I instead chose to treat the selection as a single object, this will treat the entire uh, shape range as the uh, thing that is used to calculate the rectangular area and label it. And so it's labeled it there just like that. Now, it's not necessarily obvious what was being labeled there. And we do have an option for doing it differently, adding something else, and that is to create a bounding rectangle to show the area that's being used. So in this case, that's what you'd get. If we went back and selected them again, but did not treat them all as a single object, then you see that it's created three bounding rectangles and three sets of uh, three dimension notes to go with it. Now, to show another aspect of how this works, I'm going to use this one large one, and if you look at this, the wireframe is here on the inside. It's an outside outline uh, shape. So if you see the wireframe is in there, and there, that's how it's rendered in enhanced view. And if I create this, you can see that it's creating this based on the wireframe extents of the object. That might not be the way you always want to do it. You might care about the actual size, the way it's rendered. And so I have an option here to use true size of objects. And by true size, I mean the objects the way they're rendered, including effects, uh, line caps, uh, miter joints, rounded corners, uh, things like that. So if you use the same thing, use create. Now you see you've gotten something that looks like that. Another option when creating the bounding rectangle is to use a margin. So in this case, if I make it a quarter of an inch and do the same thing, we now have a quarter inch margin here. Note that that does not change the dimensions that are shown. The dimensions are based on the content. Uh, the option to have a margin is just there if you want to have additional daylight around it because you may be using this just as an inspection thing to say, I want to see exactly what I was, uh, exactly what was being used to uh, create these dimensions. So it does not, uh, does not mean that this rectangle is that size. That really covers most of the things here on this, uh, this main panel. If we go to another page here in this multi-page setup, we see we have some options for how the text is, is done. Uh, we have an option, in this case I have this checked to use a specified color. That means it's using the color shown in this panel when it creates the, when it creates the text. If you did not have this checked, then you would get whatever color is the default color for artistic text when you create new objects in the document. So you don't have to use this if you don't want to control the color in this way. How do you add colors to this panel? Since I'm, I'm not 
not not using a full color picker here. Uh, the trick for adding colors here is you have to get it from the uniform fill of a selected object. So in this case, I could select uh, this uh, five-sided polygon over here, and this is uh, becomes enabled. I can say get from selection fill, and see it's gotten that particular uh, color in there. And if I got rid of these. We could see if we went back here that, yes, it's picked up that color the way it should. We also have the option to specify a, a layer for the text to go on. So if you want to create a specified layer, you check the box here, uh, type in some text here for the layer name. If the layer exists already, it will use it. If it does not already exist, then the layer will be created. So if you're trying to put things on layers, because you want to be able to have them there for your reference, but you might want to be able to disable printing or visibility of that layer before you create something to show a customer. Uh, that gives you a tool to do it without having to manually move them around later on. Uh, there's also a rectangles page. This has a similar thing for the bounding rectangles, except in this case, if you wanted to get to load colors in here, you would get it from the outline of selected object. So in this case, I could select this uh, magenta outline, get from selection outline, and it's loaded that color. Uh, if I want to specify the outline width, I can do that here. I can also use this get from selection outline to be able to load a number from an existing object. Again, you have a choice of whether you want them to go on a specific layer. You don't have to do this. You can just have them created in the active layer, but if you want to do a specific layer, you can do it here. Again, for the outline width and the outline color, those are things where if they are not checked here to use the ones specified here in the panel, you will get whatever those settings are for a default uh, new graphical object created in that document. Uh, last one here, we call, call MISC. Uh, when these things are created, uh, you can have the rectangle and the text grouped together. Uh, if you've done that, then you could use this delete all rect area dim groups to select all of those groups. Uh, it finds them by their names. If you did not have them grouped, and I did not have these grouped when I created these, you can say delete all rect area dim text, or you can say delete all rect area dim rectangles. So again, if you're using the rectangles as a guide to check your work while you're using this, you could just get rid of all of them later on like that. Uh, if you don't really want this there after you're done at all, you can also use this to get rid of all those in that way. Uh, if you have questions, contact me and I'll try to address them.